Welcome, welcome, welcome. Good evening, good evening, good evening. Hello, all. This it's exciting to be here again another Tuesday. This is Our Kingdom Has Come International Ministries, and this is our live virtual Bible study. We want you to go ahead and get your friends, family, co-workers, tag somebody, share this broadcast, like, uh, like it, love it, do all of the above, and come on in and home. Let's break bread. Amen. Amen. Welcome in. Welcome in. Welcome in E-Church. Welcome in TKHC family. Welcome in first time visitors, those that are viewing us for the first time. Again, welcome in. Um, we normally have our Tuesday night Bible studies, but if you catch us on a replay, um, go ahead and hit that hashtag replay so we know that you had watched us during the replay as well. So whatever time you guys are watching, welcome into the Tuesday night Bible study for TKC as we study the topic, the study of soteriology. Amen. Amen. Love, like, and share the broadcast. Love, like, and share. Do not forget to do that. We appreciate you joining us. We want to say hello, E-Church. We got a little trick. We switched it up on y'all. Uh, this time. You guys probably have never seen this. You've seen all of us, but not this three, these three here in particular. Uh, we have, This is the first time, so if you're uh, joining us tonight, you're getting a treat um, and a first-time experience of the three that you see before us. My co-laborers in the Lord, Minister Chastity and Minister Frank and myself, Minister Malik. We are excited to be here. We thank God. We're humbled to be here, to be able to break bread with you all. So we're uh, going to give you guys a few minutes uh, to get settled, get the big screen up, pop you some popcorn, uh, make you a sandwich. I don't know, whatever you decide to do uh, and, and sit down and enjoy the word and and learn more of what God is saying about this particular topic, the study of soteriology. It's going to be interesting. We have a lot to cover and a lot to share. God definitely uh, gave us some good points to give to the people. So we're excited uh, to be here tonight to give you uh, this lesson, to study this lesson with you. Remember, love the broadcast and share it. Do not forget to love and share the broadcast. We are excited. How are you guys doing? Minister Chas, Minister Frank. I am doing all right, Minister Malik. Happy to be with you guys on this second lesson in this yes. series. If you just tune in, Minister Malik did say that it is our first time being on the Bible study with all three of us. Of course, you guys have seen us teaching week after week, but this is the first three-piece combo with us yeah. on <laughs> the Bible study. So we're excited to see um, how God is going to reveal on tonight, and we're excited to give what has been given to us. So love and share this broadcast. Y'all have one more minute, 60 seconds, because we have a lot to cover. So we're going to dive in at 730. All right. 60 more seconds, and then yeah. we get started. Remember, tag three people, tag three people, tag more than three people, tag everybody. Tell them, come on in, anybody that you think would be uh, blessed or by this lesson um, or anyone that you've been talking to this week. Maybe you met someone um, at work or just out and about. Uh, if you got the information, tag them and tell them to come and join us tonight. Thank Amen. Yeah, just so glad to be with you all. Like, like they had said, this is the first time that we've done just us three. Um, we've always done it with just two of us, or it's been a different three. But we're sitting there thinking back, like since we first started doing Bible study, and Minister Malik and um, Ms. Jesse and I were like, I think this is the first time we actually all three talked together on one <laughs> lesson. It wasn't like an activity or anything like that, but actual Bible study. So yeah. I'm excited as well. Excited. See how the notes, we did a lot of our planning prior to. Um, this, but again, like as we've been saying, also do that at highlight um, for all those that are coming in, and that gets all your followers, those that tune in and watch and like kind of stream and 
secretly look at your Facebook page, if you will. Mm -hmm. um, it's what the at highlight, or you can say at followers too. That does it too as well to those that are following you. Um, if you had a Facebook page, um, and then just go ahead and hit that subscribe button on the YouTube. Um, if this is your first time coming across our YouTube channel. Amen, gentlemen. It is seven thirty-two, so let's get okay. started. All right. Um, so all of, everyone who is on the live on the stream now, we're going to pray in. And then we're going to get started and uh, dive right into this lesson. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for this time to come together and break bread and to learn more of you and to study your word. God, I plead the blood of Jesus over everyone that is uh, in attendance on this uh, on this live. I plead the blood over the minds of the teachers. I plead the blood over this lesson. Father, I thank you for covering it under your shadow. I thank you for a standard being lifted up right now. Father God, we come against all assignments and attacks on the uh, the live stream attacks on the people. Father, we thank you now, God, that a hedge of protection is around them. Father, we pray strength, oh God, to all of your people. We pray, God, that you will open up their ears unto your words, Father, that you will uh open their hearts to receive you on today, God. We pray, God, that you will crown us with wisdom, knowledge, revelation, and understanding of your word, even the more as we go forth and, and break bread, Father God. We pray uh, that you strengthen our leaders tonight, God, that you cover them wherever they are, that you bless them as they go, God. Bless them as they come in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father, for your word going out and setting out to do what it will accomplish. We pray, God, that no backlash and uh, no retaliation will come as a result of us giving out the true word of God. Father, we thank you for strengthening us right now. We lay every ounce of flesh on the altar, God. We decrease as we ask you to increase within us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 All right. Thank you. Thank you, Minister Malik, for praying us in on tonight. Welcome, everyone. Uh, again, this is Tuesday Night Bible Study. This is our second week uh, examining the study of soteriology, which is the study of salvation. Um, in our context, in our case at TKC, this is salvation through Jesus Christ. All right. Amen. Jesus I want to make that very clear. <laughs> we are studying <laughs> salvation through Jesus the Christ. Amen. So quick little intro before we get into our lesson for tonight. So uh, many people believe that they can't live full lives when they accept Jesus. How many people on watching tonight have heard something similar to that? Oh, I'll give my life to Christ when I get old. I'll give my life to God tomorrow, but the wine and said tomorrow may be too late. Okay, you may it, you it's from tomorrow is not promise. All right. Um, so how many, you know, just comment if you've heard anything related to that. Like um, I've heard that I can't, you know, you can't have fun, you can't do this, can't do that. So if you've heard that comment in the in the chat below. So people believe this as as if it takes away from enjoying life when in reality it is the opposite. Um, there is richness in salvation. Uh, redemption through Jesus Christ enhances everything about your life. Choosing to follow Christ is the best decision you will ever make. Amen. Amen. And so with that said, we want to recap last week um, and how we started off kicking off the series um, the benefits of salvation is our topic on tonight, but as a recap, um, last week to me the matter was, if you guys missed it, is when you hear the word soteriology, what does it mean to you? For many, it's a study of salvation, but it's just as Minister Chassid explained that it is specifically, we're looking at salvation through Jesus Christ. For us specifically, um, it's that point. At some point, we need to recognize that we need to be saved from a life of sin that leads to eternal death and grab hold of Christ, who is our lifeline. And so as you see in that picture there, um, in that previous slide, when we were talking about the benefits of salvation, we gave the lifeline example of Jesus Christ being that that lifesaver, um, mm -hmm. leading onto the cross in shark infested waters. Because believe it or not, we're, when you go through life, we're swimming with sharks. There's circumstances that arise that, that happen. Um, but there's benefits when you grab hold of it, not just the reward, which we'll get into when, when I pass it off to Minister Malik, 
But recap from Sunday, because it was so prevalent in how uh, Elder Loretta had taught, as we call her Master Chief, had talked about with um, the benefit. She's kind of started this all on Sunday, and um, we found it not robbery not to include it in our lesson on tonight. So if you guys missed Sunday's message, her focus scripture was Psalm 68 and 19. Blessed be the Lord who daily loads us with benefits, the God of our salvation, Salah, meaning like to pause and think about that. Because again, many people say, well, there's no benefits in following Christ. Um, you hear that a lot nowadays to where it's just mockery, but there's benefits. And it says many benefits that loads us up with it. There's abundance in it. And so she gave us three on Sunday. The first one being there is no deficiencies in God, that God meets all our needs of those that are his. Some scriptures were Psalms 37 and uh, verse 25, 2 Peter 3 verse 9, and 2 Corinthians 1 verse 20. The second point was God provides security and protection 24-7. Um, and I was referencing Jehovah Shammah, um, the God who protects and provides. And even though you may be having the odds against you, God will still protect you. Um, and those scriptures were Joshua uh, chapter 1, verse 5 through 8, and Isaiah 41 and 10. Again, we're not for a second time. We're not going to go through these scriptures. Elder already went through the scriptures and elaborate on those on Sunday. So feel free to go back and if you missed Sunday's message. Her third and final point on Sunday was God will keep you if you want to be kept. Again, God will keep those as long as they want to be kept. If you have it in your heart and, you're, and you have a made up mind that God, I'm, I, want to, I want to be safe. I'm going to do right today. I'm going to do right in this moment. God will give you a way of escape. And that was Isaiah 26, verse 3 through 4, Psalms 23 and 4. In 1 John 1 and 9, and lastly, Psalms 94 and 19. Again, those are scriptures for your reference, which are also in our resource li library as well. Um, I'm going to hand it off to Minister Malik as he kicks off tonight's lesson. Amen, amen. Thank you, Minister Frank. All right, y'all, so we're going to dive into our topic, which is still, like Minister Frank said, uh, blessings to our great elder who... Uh, probably didn't know that this was going to be here. So <laughs> the Holy Ghost was speaking and he wants the people to know about the benefits of salvation. Um, we wanted to, in our study time, we wanted to touch on something briefly as we go over the benefits. And that was to discuss and, and just give people a quick, um, uh, a quick uh, knowledge of the difference between the reward and the benefit. Um, some of us may get, you know, you may be thinking and they're they're one and the same, but they're not. Um, your benefit, let's say, okay, there's a difference, right? There's a difference between the reward and the benefit. For an example, the reward for completing high school is graduation. The benefit of a high school diploma is access to college or scholarships to attend college, right? So there's how, there's a, 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 a literal uh, example. Um, if you will, the Lord's prayer, we are instructed to pray heaven on earth. So uh, Matthew 6, 8 through 13, verse 10, it says, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So heaven manifesting on earth is the benefit because heaven is the reward. Miracles, signs, and wonders are benefits of knowing the Lord and uh, Jesus, our Savior. And and being uh, covered and, and wrapped in salvation, being sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. So these were just a couple of things we wanted to touch on. The, the, the lesson is not reward versus benefit. We're going to study the benefits of salvation, but we wanted, we thought it was not robbery to add that small tidbit that there is a reward, but we want to talk about the benefits of, of serving and coming into the knowing of salvation. Amen. Before I do jump forward, do my colleagues, do you guys have anything that you want to add to that with the reward versus benefit? Yes. And so again, like heaven is the end goal. That is the point of salvation is that you get saved and you get to, heaven. you get to be with Jesus. You get to be, be with the Lord. Um, and we'll go into like rewards a little bit later in the lesson. Um, throughout this month, but that's one thing that we wanted to make sure that you guys understood that 
your reward is heaven. We want the benefits here now on earth. It's not so many people say, oh, well, I'll just get to heaven. When I get to heaven, I have all this and this and this. God wants to bless you now. God wants to give you all the benefits along with the salvation package now. And those are what we're talking about when we talk about those benefits. Amen. Amen. Uh, Minister Chas, you got anything you want to chime in with? <laughs> sure, sir. Um, I would just uh, put a question out to the viewers on tonight. Comment in the chat and let us know. Um, just put, do you know, before we even go further into the lesson, do you know what some of the benefits are of following Jesus Christ? You can start typing them in the comments now. Like, do you know, or is this, um, new knowledge for you on tonight? Like, yes, you, we know, you may know that, you know, you get to go to heaven, but type in the comments if you know about what the other benefits are regarding, um, following Jesus Christ. Just let us know in the, in the comments, um, what, what you're thinking, what's on your mind when you hear that. Um, it's really yeah. Amen. So when you are coming into salvation, um, what is the first benefit that we want to discuss tonight? Um, if we if we if you're using uh, points to jot your notes down, we gave you the three that Elder gave in the um, sermon on Sunday. So this could be point four or it can be point one, however you want to write it down. But <coughs> excuse me, the, the first one is access. The benefit of salvation is uh, having access. What is the access? You got um, access to get to know Jesus. Um, this is the this is a very overlooked. It's a it's simple yet at the same time it is the biggest benefit of it all to know Jesus Christ mm -hmm. when you come into accept and, and accept Him as your Lord and Savior. Mm -hmm. He's the reason that He have uh, that you have access to come to God and to have your sins uh, forgiven. Amen. So the biggest benefit is you get to know Jesus and we take for granted how precious this is, but think of it as knowing the creator of a successful business owner that's willing to teach you how they created it and its purpose. Um, it's just like uh, when you, um, you get into a company, you know, you, you may work for this company and you may get to know certain, you know, co-workers and different things. But if you get access to knowing the creator and the owner who created the company, it can open up many other doors for you. So that access to getting to know Jesus is the best, best benefit of salvation. But now let's talk about access, right? Ephesians 2, 14 through 20. Um, my focus, I want to focus in on 18 and 19, but it says, for he himself is our peace who has made both one and has broke down the middle wall of separation, having abolished in his flesh the enmity that is the law of, co of commandments contained in ordinances, ordinances. The Bible says that enmity is the, is, uh, the, uh, the carnal mind is enmity with God. So you know, that's a powerful scripture by itself. Um, so that, so as to create in himself one new man from the from the two, thus making peace, 16, and that he might reconcile them both to God in one body through the cross, thereby putting to death the enmity. And he came and preached peace to you who were afar off and to those who were near. Now, the focus that we want to look at is 18 and 19. It says, for though, for through him, we both have access by one spirit to the father. Now, therefore, you are no longer strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God. This right here is, is powerful because think about it. Um, when you come into the knowledge of salvation and you accept salvation, he, it says that you are no longer a foreigner. You are no longer a stranger, you actually become a fellow citizen with the saints and the and the members in the household of God. You know, you can uh, you can get access to something and not be able, and not be allowed to move around. You mm. know, because you're still stuck in one space. You know, they say, okay, well, I'm gonna grant you access into the building, but you can't go past the first floor, right? And then because whatever they, you know, you don't have that clearance, but here it's saying, you're not a stranger. You don't be, you don't become a stranger that people don't 
know you as well. So they say, well, you ever go to somebody's house with a friend, maybe back when you was in school or something, and mm -hmm. y'all stop by a friend's house. Now, y'all, you know this friend because they know your friend who you are close with. Mm -hmm. But you get into the house and you're like, man, I got to go to the bathroom. You ask, can I use your restroom? And they said, oh, yeah, you can use the bathroom. You got access to the house. The only thing you can go use the restroom, but they still don't know you. So now they're looking for you to come right back to the door and put you right back in that one spot where they can watch and see you. Right. Because you're still a stranger to them. Amen. Right. But God said, no, no, no. When you accept my son, when you come in and you accept salvation, you're no longer a stranger. Mm -hmm. You're no longer a foreigner, but you are a fellow citizen with the saints and members of the household of God. Mm -hmm. So you get the same access. And you get to come in and you get to sup with God and you get to experience his goodness. Yeah. From from that. Uh, before I jump ahead. So do anybody want to jump in right there or tag in? <laughs> um, no, I, I was just going to say that I, I love that analogy that you use with with <laughs> with the house guests, because like, we, we can all relate to that. Right. Like you go to your friend house and you the company. So you. Right. <laughs> The company can't be too comfortable, you know, because you <laughs> exactly <laughs> can't take your shoes off, can't put your feet up because you don't have that access, right? Yeah. You, you don't live yeah. there and they don't right. know you. So, you know, I, I love that you use that. It also made me think of like um like when you uh become a US citizen or you become a citizen, mm -hmm. like, um, you now have all the rights and privileges is other U.S. citizens or other citizens of the country that you just became um, a part of. So it made me think of that, too, like versus before you probably you were enduring probably some restrictions there. You couldn't get Absolutely. this. You couldn't go mm -hmm. here. You couldn't apply for this because you were not a citizen. But now you did that paperwork. You passed that test. Mm -hmm. You know, and you're good to go. So right. I, I love that connection that you made. I wonder, I wonder if anybody would felt what if God, you know, now God does put us through tests, right? But yeah. it's not like, oh, you're going to get a test to be, you know, uh, a citizen. You, you you get tested. Yeah. But what if it was like that? Like, what if you, if you fail, he'd be like, nah, you can't, you get denied. And that's the good thing about mm -hmm. salvation as well. You get access to forgiveness. Yeah. You know, you get the access to forgiveness where, you know, you may not get it right all the time, but you have that access to come into the, the knowledge and to the forgiveness. Um, Minister Frank, you had anything before I go forward? No, like I said, I love the analogy. Also, I think of it like the when you have going to a king courts, you have that access, you have that privilege. Um mm -hmm. I'm not sure if you had it. I was like trying to look through, make sure I'm not going too far ahead of the notes. Um, but mm -hmm. to where you had that access before we didn't have that access. Mm -hmm. Because because before Christ, we had to rely on one man to pray for us. Can you imagine sitting there like, man, you got to wait all month long? Like, God, I know I'd have messed up. I just hope this priest don't mess up when he, before he gets to the Holy of Holies and we got to drag his dead body out because he messed up. Oh, like, man. we had that access now through prayer. Um, which is, I think, your next point or coming up point. But we have that access right there to go to the Father and say, hey, I'm dealing with this. I need help with this. Um, and that's how, like, when me and uh, me and Mr. Leek and I, before Ms. Chastity got together with our notes, we are like, man, we, this is so simple. We forgot the simplest thing about, man, we forget that Jesus, we get to know Jesus. Like, right. that's the greatest part. And like, if you've been walking with Christ for so long, you get so familiar with that, that um, it's like, God, I, I miss that. God, like, that we take for granted that access. Mm -hmm. um, so, mm -hmm. like, just a reminder, like, don't, don't, don't neglect that access benefit. It's just like, you know, this famous person, but you treat him commonplace mm -hmm. because you have access with him, and so. Mm -hmm. When you look at it at that standpoint, because not everybody can say, God, I need you to heal my body. And he does the miracle right there and in there. Or, hey, God, I need this to happen. Or, hey, God, I just want to talk to you today. And I just want to hear your thoughts on this and get, and get that advice. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. And we're going to mm -hmm. talk more about the um, immediate benefits of yeah. salvation so hold on for that guys because yeah. we're going to go further into that um tonight yeah. Ms. Yeah. Malik. so let's um let's pick up where we left off right so we have this access now 
Romans 5 and 2, um, if you will get that scripture, Romans 5 and 2, it says, through whom also we have access by faith into this grace in which we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. So that is the, that is once again, that, per, that access, that, that permission, that privilege, um, almost like, like in to be a VIP. Think of it, you know, when you go to a show or you go somewhere and you get a VIP badge, um, you get access to behind the scenes, um, you get access to an advantage, mm -hmm. right? You have a VIP, the advantage is when you get a VIP, you might get, uh, you can go in early, you know, you might can do meet and greets. I love something very simple. Uh, you get a plus membership at Sam's or Costco. You mm -hmm. know, you get to go in there at eight o'clock and do your shopping and everybody else got to wait till 10, mm -hmm. you know, but you get the early bird special because you, you paid a little more. You did. And you got a bigger, you got a, a, a closer, um, you got a better uh, VIP package, a mm -hmm. better advantage. And that's how you look at the benefit of salvation. There's an advantage to it. Favor mm -hmm. isn't fair. So, you know, it's just, it is what it is. When you come into that knowledge of salvation, when you accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, there's an advantage that comes to your life. Um, I like to look at Philippians 3, um, 7 through 11. This is in the Amplified, right? It says, this is good though. It says, but what whatever former things were gains to me, as I thought then, these things once regarded as advancements in merit, I have come to consider as loss, absolute, absolutely worthless for the sake of Christ and the purpose which he has given my life. Now, before I go forward, how many of us look at everything that we've already achieved? You know, you looking at how many degrees you going down and getting, you looking at all of the um, accolades that you, you, you know, all of these different awards and different mm -hmm. things that you're, you're holding dear to your heart saying, you know, I've made these great accomplishments. Nobody is, is downplaying them saying that, that, that they're not a, a great accomplishments. Mm -hmm. But here, Paul, I love what he's saying. He said, all of those things, I count it absolutely worthless for the sake of Christ, for the purpose that he has given me in my life. But more than that, I count everything as a loss compared to the priceless privilege and supreme advantage of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord, and of growing more deeply um, and thoroughly acquainted with him, a mm -hmm. joy that's unequaled. Amen. Um, that's the focus that I wanted to zero in on. He said the priceless privilege. It, it is priceless. There is no, no amount of money or wealth that could ever overtake or make it more valuable than the privilege of having Jesus Christ in your life as okay. and, and accepting him as your Lord and Savior. That is a benefit that's unparalleled. That is a benefit that uh that no other benefit can usurp. If you think about the advantage, he said the supreme advantage, supreme advantage, meaning you know you have you have the Alpha and Omega make an intercession for you now because you have accepted him. You have uh, the Alpha and Omega, the Jehovah Jireh providing for you mm -hmm. when you don't know what to do or not, or the job is not providing. Amen. Mm -hmm. So you get these advantages that are benefits that you reap right here in the earth realm that you get to see every day. Somebody type in the chat, he, the Lord got the best benefit package. <laughs> you know, when we go shooting for the jobs, right, Chaz? We're yeah. looking for jobs and we're like, everybody's like, oh, well, you know, you'll be willing to take a little bit of pay cut if that benefit package is crazy. Yeah. You know, they're like, oh, you, they giving you, oh, they pay for my whole, um, they pay for my whole uh, uh, health uh, health health care and mm -hmm. oh, I got a really good 401k. They're not paying me that much that I, what I want by the hour or by the salary, but but I have real good benefits, you know? Yeah. So people, people zero in on them benefits. So I'm, I'm driving right now. I'm driving to you, God's people, to know that there is no greater benefit package than the one that the Lord provides. Amen. Amen. Uh, Minister Chas, did you have anything? Uh, no, sir. Minister Frank, I'm going to move. We're moving around. Okay. So one of the other benefits is the righteousness. 
that you receive because you don't have uh, your righteousness is as a filthy rags. So you get the benefits of having the Lord's righteousness covering you, which in turn does what makes your prayers availeth much. Amen. James 5, 16 says, therefore, confess your sins to one another, your false steps, your offenses, and pray for one another that you may be healed and restored. The heartfelt and persistent prayer of a righteous man, believer, is able to accomplish much when put into action and made effectively and made effective by God. It is dynamic and can have tremendous power. Amen. So you have you have access to a righteousness that allows your prayers to avail much when you stay and you walk in the righteousness that is upon you that comes through the gift of salvation. Mm -hmm. That's a powerful thing. Amen. That's a that's a beautiful thing, knowing that you have an advantage even in your prayer life. Mm. Jesus. Jesus. Man, <laughs> <laughs> you get an advantage even in your prayer life because you have uh, accepted salvation. You have accepted the Lord. Amen. Um, Psalms 21 and we, we're moving, you know, for the sake of time. But Psalms 21, verse five and six says his glory is great in your salvation, just in your salvation, his glory, his glory becomes great at the fact that you have not hardened your heart to accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your savior, honor and majesty you have placed upon him for you have made him most blessed forever. You made him exceedingly glad with your presence. So the Lord, the Lord gets excited. You ever hear when they say, when a, when a soul comes in they say, heaven is rejoicing. Mm -hmm. Amen. Heaven is rejoicing because that soul heard the Lord and did not harden a heart. And God mm -hmm. rejoices every time that a soul accepts salvation. So you get the benefit of his uh, His honor his and his majesty placed upon you. Amen. Amen. Minister Chess, do you want to uh, chime in? I mean, oh, matter of fact, before I do give it, pass it, I'm going to tag you in right quick. Okay. But I also want to mention Ezekiel. I know we didn't have this, but I was hearing this. In uh, Ezekiel, uh, oh, Holy Ghost, thirty-six. Ezekiel thirty-six, right? Um, he said, "I will take, I will take the stony heart, and I believe it's Ezekiel thirty-six and twenty-six. I will take the stony heart and give you a heart of flesh, and I will put my spirit within you that you may keep my statutes." Right? Mm -hmm. That comes to mind when I think about that is that access you get access to a new you. You get access to being created new. You get access to taking that old, filthy spiritual heart, and he places a new heart of flesh, uh, and some trying to say a willing heart, Amen. a willing heart of flesh in your body so that you can, in your spirit, excuse me, so that you can walk out the statutes of God and, and, and live in the righteousness that gives you all of these advantages and these benefits. Amen. 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 Um, so, guys, we are we're coming up on our um, second benefit of the night. But before we do, we wanted to just highlight an example of um, the righteous having priority in prayer. And that mm -hmm. is from um, Elijah's prayer in Second Kings uh, chapter 18, verses 20 through 40. Um, now, if you recall, we studied faithful prayers um, in May of last year, 2023. And so we kind of did a case study of these prayers. Um, so quickly, I'll just summarize kind of what we uh, pulled from that lesson. Uh, so it says, looking closely, and this is, again, 2 Kings uh, mm -hmm. chapter 18, verses 20 through 40. Uh, looking closely at this uh, passage, Elijah never said that he wanted, he never said what he wanted God to do with the sacrifice um, that was on the altar. He prepared everything and gave instructions to the people Um helping him, but he never prayed his desire aloud. Uh, the contrast here to the Baal worshipers, again, um, read the, the chapter and you'll get the full context. But the contrast here um, to the Baal worshipers is that scripture says in verse 29 that there was no response, no one answer, and no one paid attention um, when the Baal worshipers, those that were not, were not worshiping the God that we know, nothing came about from all they hollering, hooping and hollering, okay? Now, this speaks volumes to what it means to pray prayers of faith because the prayers of the righteous 
availeth. Availeth means to produce or result in as a benefit or advantage. We talk, we're going to be talking about more about advantage tonight. Um, availeth much. Uh, another reference for that is James 5 and 16. Uh, it means the righteous have priority in prayer. Uh, God hears other people's prayers, but the righteous have the advantage of God hearing and answering their prayers. Um, said aloud or within their hearts because of their faith in him. God, God plays, um, excuse me, pays special attention to prayers of faith. Amen. 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 Anything to add to that before we go to our second benefit? Really quickly, I would just say there are so many different examples of everybody, of people in the Bible whose prayers had the the righteous advantage if we want to call yeah. it that right <laughs> um there's a lot you know that you can look at for that um you know jesus himself had a very uh a, a big advantage because he walked so um he walked in the statutes of god he walked in the precepts and concepts of his father so Amen. he had a, a a righteous advantage um the apostles they had righteous advantage um different, you know, different ones, the prophets, uh, you know, Jeremiah, all of them, they had, a lot of them had uh, Isaiah, they had a righteous advantage. And 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 just to think, not even just a uh, thinking of prophets or, whom, or, or whatever, but if you think about Hezekiah, that's what comes to me as well. Mm -hmm. Hezekiah just had a record that he can go back to God with mm -hmm. because he he uh he kept the statutes and the, and the law of God. So mm -hmm. when God said that he was going to die he turned his face to the wall and prayed and called mm -hmm. his record out to god right that's 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 as simple it could be just like one of us we could turn our face to god call a record and i mean well i'm gonna just say this can you call your record to god mm -hmm. um and have him answer before the prophet even leaves to have mm -hmm. to turn around and come back and say the lord heard your prayer and mm -hmm. he adds 15 years to your life Amen. And that speaks Amen. beautifully to what we said about the permission and privilege. As right. a guy had that permission and privilege to turn his face to the wall and pray and God hear him. Amen. <laughs> Straight quickly. way too. Straight way. <laughs> <laughs> Straight shooter. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Amen. So we're going to our second benefit, guys. Our second Amen. benefit. Salvation provides restoration. All right. So, Kanye, if you're watching this, you was in my lesson on um, Resurrection Sunday. You said this when you was doing your speech. I said, it's kind of been sitting with the Lord. She done mm. heard. Sitting on get, the heart. Close, Kanye, yeah. get it, get it, get it. <laughs> get them. All right. So, salvation provides restoration. A benefit of salvation is restoration. When God does a thing, he does it so that nothing is missing, lacking, or broken. When God does a thing, he does it so there is nothing missing, lacking, or broken. If something missing, something lacking, something broken, we got to think about if God did it. <laughs> okay? Yeah. All right. Uh, when Jesus was raised from the dead, he didn't wake up a zombie, y'all. He didn't wake up with, with uh, his mind out of whack. He didn't wake up out of sorts. He woke up with what? All power in his hands. Amen? Amen. All right. Amen. He wasn't, we say he wasn't out of sorts. He wasn't confused. Though he was dead for days. We ain't even going to get into that. He was dead for days. Okay. Now we know when, when the body, when life leaves the body, rigor mortis, all this stuff set in. Okay, we just we all, all all that, just like all that. Consider all of that. Okay. So even Jesus was there for days. The risen Jesus, he got up with all of his motor skills intact. And we know this because he was talking to people after he after he rose, he was talking to people, telling them where to meet him on the road, on the hill, at the house, he was going to eat, all this other stuff. Okay. So we know that his motor skills and stuff were intact. Um, and his physical body and mind were all intact. We know that because people recognized him, the risen Jesus. The disciples recognized him. When they saw him, they recognized him. At first, some of them did. But when it came to the knowledge, they're like, oh. So we know they recognized him, right? After, after he was risen from the dead. Matthew 28 mm -hmm. and 18 says, 
And Jesus came and spoke to them saying, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. John 10 and 10 says the thief, the thief comes only in order to steal, kill and destroy. I came, meaning Jesus came, that they may have and enjoy life and have it in abundance to the full till it overflows. Mm. Thank you, Lord. Whatever your issue is, Christ died for it. Whatever it is, insert your issue here tonight. Christ died for it. Okay. They need to type that in the chat. Type that Whatever in the chat. it is. Whatever yeah. it is, Christ died for it. <laughs> Covers all the bases. Okay. Um, whether that is sickness, poverty, anger, abandonment, whatever, he died so that you could obtain victory over that thing. Let's take trauma, for example. Okay. Um, now we're, this is not to discredit any, um, anything that may have happened to you, happened to somebody that, you know, this is not that. So don't miss what we're saying here. Let's just take this as an example. Just take trauma in general as an example. Because if you look at it, trauma is sort of trendy in a sense. And again, don't misunderstand what we're saying here tonight, okay? It's like you may hear things um, like, oh, it's fine, it's just my trauma, or oh, I say this or I do this just because, you know, I was involved with this, that, and the other. And we say these things so nonchalant, no, uh, so nonchalantly, like there's no way out of them, okay? Right? We say these things like it's like it always has to be that way. Um, like you can't but you can't put your trauma before God as if the bad things you've endured are too much for God to handle or that you can't be healed from them. Are y'all listening? Y'all listening to me? You can't you, you, you can't lift up. You can't lift up that thing. Those things higher higher than God as if it's too hard for him or he can't take it. He can't heal you, deliver you, set you free from it. The, whatever it is, whatever it is, it's not bigger than God. Jesus. Let's just put that out there. Whatever it is, you can't put your, your past, you know, that past hurt, that past trauma, whatever it is, you can't put that, again, whatever it is, you can't put it above God like he can't do it. Like you always got to stay in that thing. Like it ain't no freedom from it. You always going to be bound. Okay. I'm getting excited. <laughs> okay. Oh, Lord. Let's, keep, let's keep going. Let's keep going. Okay. <laughs> Losing my place. Okay. We said you can't put your trauma before God as if the bad things you endured are too much for God to handle or that you can't be healed from it. Um, here, just, this is just an example. We see an example of healing and restoration from a traumatic experience with Mary Magdalene. Um, being healed from seven demons. There's scripture. Um, there are others, but a scripture, scripture reference we have for this is Luke eight, chapter uh, Luke eight, verse one through three. Um, and we have a clip on our resource page that you can go and look at from the um, series chosen, the biblical um, series chosen uh, that you can take a look at, and we'll type the link in the comments as well. But encounter Jesus. The the point of that uh, example encounter Mary encounter Jesus completely healed, completely healed. Seven demons, Amen. seven demons. Scripture says she was suffering with seven demons. Okay, so what what does that tell us? We have some mental mental stuff mm -hmm. going on. We have some mm -hmm. um, mental struggles, mental health struggles and going on. Right, mental trauma. Mental trauma going on. Yes, right. we had a, we had a lot going on. So we probably people probably saw her acting out in all kind of ways. She probably had never been able to have a clear thought in her mind. But what are we talking about? Salvation provides restoration. Is that that's what we're saying tonight? All right. Mm. Well, benefit number two. Um, mm. Jesus was is was is remarkable even in death. Key observations about the risen King: His body was made whole. He didn't wake up with the disfigurement endured during the crucifixion. Now, Scripture says that they beat Jesus until he was unrecognizable. Right. That's how bad. The Romans beat him. Mm -hmm. He didn't wake up like that. Jesus, no, he <laughs> didn't. He, uh, he didn't get up like that. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> okay? No, he didn't. No, that he didn't. Lesson. Yes. That ain't the lesson, Lord. but we just put it out. All right. My God. <laughs> uh, he didn't wake up with the dis with the disfiguration endured during the crucifixion. We know this because the disciples again recognize him post resurrection. He still had the nail marks in his hands. 
and the wound in his side from when they pierced him. So he had the nail marks in his hands from the nails when he was on the um when he was being crucified, nailed to the cross, and then he had the wound in his side from when they pierced him with the spear and the blood and the water came out. So he still had those when he uh after he got up. All right. This is encouraging the, the nails in the, in the side. This is encouraging because it shows us trauma and other experience don't have to make us any less whole. Type it oh in the comments. Gosh. Type That's it in the right comments. It we talk about have to thank you. Mm. I'll, I'll say that again. This is encouraging. We're talking about that Jesus when uh, post resurrection after he got up that he still had the nails and the wound in his side. This is encouraging because it shows us that trauma, whatever your negative experiences, other hurtful experiences don't have to make us any less whole. Okay. Okay. Can I jump in real quick? Mr. Your Chaplin? Car, so you can too. I gotta tap in because Elder said if you want to be kept, he'll keep you. If you want to be kept. So I mean that right there was a good <laughs> spot to just drop that on him real quick one time because. You can you if you want to hold on to your trauma, then you you go and hold on. But with there's there's a there's freedom on the on this on this this uh this live here tonight. There's freedom it's for free. that. You did we giving you access to freedom through Jesus Christ, through salvation through Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm Hallelujah. telling you that that's powerful, Chas. I wanted to tap in real quick just to say yeah, yeah. that um people. You know, people deny. I, I, it makes me think of the scripture that um, you have you accept the form of godliness, but deny the power thereof. Because when you when you sit there and say that, oh, this is just um, this is I this is what I went through as a little girl. So this is what is the result of that, this and you become be. comfortable with that, mm -hmm. and you decide that you're going to function in your dysfunction mm -hmm. with the trauma that caused it, but. You don't want to accept the freedom that comes to you through salvation in Jesus Christ. That That's was a powerful, list. powerful <laughs> example because <laughs> him being disfigured the way he was and waking up also take me to the scripture said that it shall not be compared with the glory that shall be revealed, all of your present day sufferings. So there's a glory that's going to be revealed. And that's how he got up Jesus. with that glory. Oh, God, <laughs> Jesus. That's good. Amen. And like, Amen. like to add on to that, like as you're saying, like that, that point right there, so many missed that, mm -hmm. that he was recognizable, mm -hmm. but yet he still had the signs of what he went through, mm -hmm. but that did not define him. We're defined, he was defined by the, the risen power that he came up with. And so when you become saved, your trauma should be overlooked because now you're holding on to the glory, which is to come. Because now you're like saying, okay, well, I'm holding on to this lifeline as I'm holding on to this lifeline being Jesus. I'm getting closer and closer to what he called me to be. Mm. I'm getting, I'm grabbing on all these benefits that we're teaching on tonight because of that. Get part of that benefit, like you're saying, from that trauma is the fact that I'm, not, I'm stronger. I'm not going through that no more. Mm. I, I see what happened or what could have been, what could have been worse. Mm -hmm. Like you said, you got that picture of that car accident right there. To where I go back as a, not still your testimony, but just using your testimony, I can use the same testimony because I've been in several car accidents to where my car was completely wrecked and i walked out with just a minor bruise when it could have been worse um i'm talking about a car impacted and caved in like like a little tra uh, soda can that's been crushed mm -hmm. um but again like i don't look like the trauma you don't look like the trauma from when your accident happened mm -hmm. Amen. and so that's that's all of what like said like you overlook that because of the fact that we hold on to that benefit of that restorative restore process Amen. Amen. This this getting real good. I'm trying. I'm trying to wrap it up, y'all. Trying to wrap it up. <laughs> we get to I, know. I, know. <laughs> I got like two more points. Um, go, but yeah, go, go. what what uh, right. what came when y'all was when y'all was saying that was like because you know with this trauma stuff and we we this is not the lesson, but you know this you know your stuff your stuff is your stuff. Everybody got their stuff, right? But mm -hmm. you don't have to stay in your stuff. Um, and you, but the world will try to make you think like that thing, it's always got to define you. And when, you know, when you outside of this life of Christ, when you, when you ain't, ain't been rescued, um, when Jesus ain't pulled you out, you know, you think that that, 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 that has to be you. Like, that's all you are like that. That's your identity. But when you become saved through Jesus Christ, 
your identity is fine in him. So like Mr. Frank said, that thing, old things are passed away. That's not even, it happened. We're not discrediting that. It happened It's part of your life. It's part of your story. But that's not just you. Like, that's not the only thing about you anymore. Like, Christ is, Christ is, is now the head of your life. And so everything else got to come subject. Okay. So the long story mm -hmm. short, <laughs> scars don't stop you from living, girl. Sons, mm -hmm. uh, scars don't stop you from living, sir. All mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, scripture reference uh, I have for that was John 20, verse 24 through 29. Um, scripture says Jesus is the name above all names. Philippians 2 and 9, this includes trauma or whatever your issue that you are facing right now, okay? Mm -hmm. Everything must bow down and come subject to the authoritative, restorative power of Christ. We can experience mm -hmm. freedom and restoration from whatever bondage holds us captive. I don't care what anybody else tell you. It's freedom out here for you if you want it, okay? Through Jesus, mm -hmm. that's where you're going to find it. Um, that's what Jesus died for, Okay. What he died for if you can't be free from it? Why did he die if you can't be free? It, man, that part. That why, part. Why? Amen. Why? Listen. If he died for it, why you can't be free? I'm going to leave y'all alone. Scripture. Uh, look, closing scripture. Psalm 23 and 3. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Minister for his Father. name. Say, um, I know we got to go, but I got look. Do you, you know it's on? And, it's on and cracking now, Chad. I seriously, I, I, um, I was looking at uh, a message that I, um, our co-pastor was preaching, and this scripture, Joel two twenty five. He said, "I will restore to you the years that the locust hath eaten, the canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm, mm -hmm. my great army which I sent among you." He said, "I will restore those years." The, the the great restorer. So all of those things that you had in your trauma time during, mm. during the times that you went through your trauma and all of that, he said you might have missed some things, but he said I will restore those years. Okay. I will restore, man. I'm not going. Listen, I'm this this right here as a as a as a restorer is powerful. It's powerful. So think, yeah, I love I love that. I just love the fact that God thinks of us in that way to be able to restore you. You know, even when you fall short, because the, the, the Bible lets us know we all fall short of the glory, right? Amen. But he always willing to restore us to him. He said he's faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Amen. That's another access point right there. Amen. And I'm, putting, I'm putting, oh. um, just a quick note, uh, I'm putting the scriptures I reference uh, in the comments now, guys, Minister Frank. All right, and so the final one we're talking about, the final benefit is the Holy Ghost. Salvation comes with the Holy Ghost. Again, he said, and I'm going to start off a little bit out of the order here, but it starts off with in John 14 and 26, but the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring you to your remembrance, all things that I said. And so, again, that Another benefit of salvation is you get the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost comes once you start that process. God, I want to be saved. God, I want to be set free. I want to be delivered. God, I want to know what my purpose is. And you, the Holy Ghost comes in like a gentleman saying, hey, let me help you out the way. Let me start leading you into all truths. Mm -hmm. And because of this, this is where we get that cleanliness. Like you start cleaning this up saying, hey, I see, I see you in this right now. I see in this, and yeah, you have a little mess that we got to clean up right here. Let's mm -hmm. start working on this. Let's start. Let's start small. Something that you can manage and can do. And then once after that, he's like, okay, well, now that you tackled that, let me go ahead and start renewing your, helping me renew your mindset mm -hmm. and renewing the right thinking. And this is like all in Titus three, four through seven. Um, and then the fact that it's not that to where back then. The Holy Ghost, God would kind of send a helper or an angel to kind of rest on people, right? Back in the Old Testament days, before Christ, before like there was a, because again, we were on pure, we, God couldn't touch us. Um, and so he could rest on us and use an individual or a prophet and he'll sit on a prophet back then. But now it's, he's, it's an indwelling where it's like, let me commune in you. So now we become, we, are, we become the temple. Our bodies become the temple. Mm -hmm. And because of the fact that we, um, gave our temple over to God, our, our bodies, 
our hearts to God. So now the Holy Ghost can now dwell within our hearts. And that's coming from 1 Corinthians 3 and 16. Like I said, I'm not going to uh, go into these just for sake of time as the time is drawing nigh. Um, the other one is the Holy Ghost is a sign. Having the Holy Ghost is a sign of that you're sealed unto the day of redemption. It's, mm -hmm. It talks about where it's like, don't be amazed that you can cast out demons um, and, and heal and um, restore limbs and perform all these things. No, it says rejoice in the fact that your name is book written in the Nellan Book of Life because of the fact that the Holy Ghost is in operation and moving. A lot of times we can't sit there. We can't get on this live and talk what well, we can, but it would be out of giftings. But we don't want just giftings teaching to you guys. We want the anointing of the Holy Ghost to come through and teach with power and demonstration. And so, again, there's a difference where you can sit there in a, in a church filled with the Holy Ghost that's just going to, uh, that's moving accordingly versus the church is going through a program and, and just hyping you up like you're in a concert or just a feel good message. And, uh, and that's just giving you motivational speaking um, out of a gift. But when you have the Holy Ghost, you sit, you sit there at the end of the service like, God, I, I feel free. I feel delivered. I got some, I got some revelation because the Holy Ghost revelates the scripture and brings the scripture out to life to you guys. Think about when, before you're saved, for, and for those that are not saved right now, that's looking right now, you can sit here and read the Bible. You can pull up the book, the Bible, and start reading through the 66 books. But without the Holy Ghost saying, hey, this is what this means. Let me break this down to you. Let's, let, let's make this scripture relevant to you. Again, like we're, we start off with the Lord's Prayer, and it's like, bring it here on earth as it is in heaven. Like we're praying things that are in heaven on earth. Miracles, signs, and wonders, they're heavenly. The manifestation is what happens on earth. That's what we're praying. That's what is revelating to us is saying, oh, well, we're going back to the days of Acts. What's the, what's the days of Acts? That's when miracles, signs, and wonders happen every day, every hour, every minute, because of their faith was in activation and the Holy Ghost is moving in the earth. Now we're in a time to where people want to restrict the Holy Ghost. But when you get when you have true salvation, you're like, God, have your way. Holy Ghost, move. Do what you will. And because of that, now you're, you're freely moving. You're not restrictive. You're not sitting there doubting. Um, and then the other scripture that we have right here that the Holy Ghost does is he teaches your hands to war. You're sitting there like, well, I'm not a fighter. I don't know how to to uh, to go about the strategy in war. Or I don't know how to effectively say what I need to get across. Again, war is just not just fighting. It's just not, it's the strategy behind it. It's when the enemy attacks you, well, what's the scripture you go with? What is the combat scenario that you need to go and have ready when you're attacked? Again, that's Psalms 144, 1 through 3, that he teaches you all that. Um, train and conquer is like what um, co pastors, ministry, uh, Lazy Gaga ministry that she has, teaching intercessors. Again, that's birthed out from the Holy Ghost and her spending time with the Holy Ghost and, and in prayer, in communion with him. And he birthed her out, the, gave her the strategies how to raise up intercessors internationally. Any, um, anybody else before I go on? I kind of know I jumped a little bit throughout my notes. Y'all have anything y'all want to add before I continue? No, sir. No. Okay. okay. And so the other thing is the Holy Ghost helps you with your purpose. Again, that's Exodus 35 and 35. This is like back then when they were building the temple um, for God. And he started giving people design, like people ways to build. Um, it says, and he filled them with skill to do all manner of work of the engraver and the designer of the tapestry maker in blue, purple, and scarlet thread and fine linen. And of the weaver. Those who do every work and those who design artistic works. And that's where we get that scripture or that saying that's popular. He, he gives us creative ability. Again, because God is the creator of all things. But again, the Holy Ghost is saying, oh, well, you have a, a creative gift in you. But yet, if you don't spend time and commune and seek out God and grab hold of salvation, again, that's part of the benefit. Because again, now you have access to all these things that have been lying dormant in you. And then it gets you past your trauma. So once you get once you do all that and the fact that you want to be kept and the fact that you sit there like God is um, my keeper and the one that provides for me. 
he's going to provide you with those creative abilities. He going to say, well, I have this gifting in you, so let me open this up. Holy Ghost will start unraveling those things to you saying, hey, let's dig a little deeper. You can draw more than what you think you can draw. You can write more than what you think you can write. Oh, you have a, a entrepreneur spirit. Let me show you what business to go into and what business I have in plan for you to bless my people and to bless you because you're um, honoring and serving me. And to step away from your job that you think that you're bound to, but he can get you past your job. He can get you past your circumstance. And that's what the Holy Ghost is all there for, giving you those creative, um, open your mindset towards that. And then um, it changes, he changes the trajectory of your life is what um, a point minister BB had put down. And um, the scripture I found with that is uh, Matthew 19, verse 16 through 28. Um, but again, there's none good. It's talking about to where, um, excuse me, 16 and 28. Um, it says that there's no good except God is, um, having many things makes it difficult to see the benefit because this is talking about a rich young ruler coming to Christ. And he's like, well, well, why don't you just give everything to me if you're trying to get into heaven, if you're trying to get the benefits here on earth? Because, again, we get stuck on, oh, I got money. I don't need God. I don't need to do anything like that. I don't need to get my life over my business, my myself. Everything I, I I accomplished all these by my own hands, and you get mm -hmm. prideful, and you can get reliant on your own personal gains. Get reliant on a job that's that's just providing for you. Get reliant on your parents. Get reliant on just material things that's keeping you stable. But he says, "Well, why don't you just give it all away so that way you can fully trust me?" In essence, is what Christ was kind of saying. It's like because he is trusting in his riches, he's trusting in his, his notoriety, he's trusting in his status to where he got here on life. But once he started, mm -hmm. but once he said that, the disciples were like, wait, how can how can any man get in heaven then if, if there's only just one good being God? And that if it if it takes us giving everything, he says, Well, we have followed it, we have followed you. He says, Surely you follow you follow me, but greater were those that have not seen me that can follow. And mm -hmm. and it says because of the fact that they trust me. And again, when you start trusting the Holy Ghost, all these things start happening and all these benefits start coming to you a lot quicker because you say, hey, it's just like walking in public in a store and you're going through thrift fronds and you got like an advisor with you saying, hey, look at that. Let me, let me bargain that down for you. And he says, let me let me go ahead and negotiate for you. It's like when you're trying to go to a, a car dealership, right? You need a negotiator trying to get the car that you want. And that you're not even qualified for. That 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 advisor is saying, hey, they got this done, they got this done, the credit's in line, all this, they meet the requirements. Better yet, like you should be giving them this car for free. Next thing you know, you're walking out a little for nothing because of the fact that he done negotiated your way through and helped you get good to what you needed because of that favor along with the Holy Ghost seeing those things. I want uh, I want. If if I can jump in with you really yes, quick, sir. bro, because now you was making some really good points, and I wanted to also just kind of reiterate how powerful the benefit of the Holy Ghost is. Um, that that the Holy Ghost in itself is a very powerful benefit of of salvation, um, and it made me think of um, being somewhere like when you if you if you've ever traveled anywhere and you know you know you didn't have um, you're not familiar with the territory. You're, you're in unfamiliar land. You like, well, you want to know where is the closest grocery store? Where can I get gas? Where can, uh, where's their hotels? You know, where are the things for your livelihood? And um, somebody breaks out a map. You know, let's we going old school. We're not gonna say Google Maps. We're gonna say somebody has a map with all the points of interest that you that are needed, right? Um, and that's how I look at it. That's what came to me as you were talking about the Holy Ghost, how much of a roadmap the Holy Ghost is in life and in the walk through salvation. You need it just like you would need that map to navigate in those unfamiliar territories. That is a powerful benefit of salvation uh, coming into uh, the, the acceptance of the Holy Ghost, because the Holy Ghost is what's going to navigate you through the, the the wiles of the enemy it's going to navigate you through all of the ups and downs that you go through and it's going to help you to remember 
the other benefits so that you can be strengthened and be encouraged to keep going and keep fighting the good fight of faith. So the Holy Ghost is, is in my book, probably number two next to Jesus, because it's a powerful benefit. <laughs> Amen. And the fact that he brings that scripture to your remembrance. Again, we can't do that on our own. Like it's the Holy Ghost. Hey, you don't, you don't, you don't sit there and study this word. Let me bring this back up to help you fight this back Amen. and encourage you your way. And he's like, hey, remember that? Remember when God brought you through that? Remember when God helped you with this situation? He encourages you when no one else encouraged. He said, man, it'd be a whole conversation. Thank you, Holy Ghost, for this. Thank you, Holy Ghost, for that. And it's not just like we get stuck. Church, the 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 world will have you thinking the Holy Ghost is just you um, having a, uh, what do you call that, with an uh, unction, and you're just sitting there moving or whatnot, or and speaking in tongues. No, the Holy Ghost is more than just speaking in tongues. The tongues just come because of the fact that He's saying stuff that confuse the enemies and stuff to where you can't discredit what he's trying to say to God. Because some things like you might be saying stuff in tongues like, God, I thank you that I'm going to be the best of this and best of that. But if you have self-doubt in your spirit, he's going to override your self-doubt. You're not allowed you to hear that and speak what he wanted, what needs to be said for your spirit so that God can get, start doing the work in you. Amen. And, um, so... Uh, Minister Chas, do you have anything that you want to chime in with that? Um, <laughs> no, sir. No, no, no chime in. I, I, I will just echo your. Uh, so I do have chime in. Then. Um, just, <laughs> echo, <laughs> I just echo what you said about um, the Holy Ghost being like the second benefit of knowing Jesus. Because yeah, they they right there. They right there right. together. So they go hand in hand. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Right. So look, y'all love like and share if you did just join or if you just Sorry, I don't know, it was, <laughs> right i don't know where you've been at we were talking about the benefits of salvation amen and minister frank just uh, gave us the holy ghost as one of the benefits amen so we hope that everything that was said and given um was a blessing to you we hope that it was something that would help you along your walk uh, with Christ. And if you don't know Christ, if you have never known Christ, if you haven't accepted Christ, we pray that this lesson has compelled you to come and want to know more of Jesus to say, what must I do to be saved? Amen. Um, Minister Amen. Chas, who do you want? Who's re you want to do the meat of the matter? I, I got the meat of the matter. You got it? All right. You yeah. can go ahead and and so the meat of the matter, if you guys didn't get anything else from this lesson on tonight, um, the meat of the matter is what we started doing, I think, last year, just kind of summarize our lesson. And so for those who joining in, if you guys missed it all the way up until now, um, it is the reward of salvation is heaven. But the benefits of choosing Jesus as Lord and Savior are what we experience on earth. Think of favor, or perhaps you've heard the saying, favor ain't fair. Mm -hmm. Believers often experience favor or benefits on earth to help us navigate life circumstances. But favor isn't necessarily in heaven because we've already obtained the reward. You can enjoy many benefits here on earth before getting into heaven, including having a relationship with Jesus. Knowing Jesus grants privilege of a better life, far better than the life without him. Mm -hmm. A better life in Christ includes restoration, and being introduced to the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost helps you understand your purpose and other earthly benefits. And so again, yeah. if you guys didn't get anything out of less than this is what we wanted to chime, chime in on and hone in on. Amen. And then, Amen. So this, uh, now this part of the lesson, guys, we don't, we want to know if anyone uh, would like to accept the Lord Jesus as their Lord and Savior. If this lesson has touched your heart, if it has, uh, if you feel the tug of God, he said the day that you hear uh, voice, his voice, harden not your heart. So we have put together a prayer of repentance um, here that you can just read and we will read with you um, to accept you into the fold, to get that access into the household. Amen. Um, and with the members and the saints into the household of God. 
amen, to have that privileged and that event, that righteous advantage, amen. Um, so if you haven't, the, and you're on this live, if you were looking at it in a repeat and you, you're you doing the replay and you've gotten to this point, we would like for you to uh, read and pray this prayer of repentance if you feel uh, led by the Holy Ghost into this. And it reads, Heavenly Father, I acknowledge to you that I am a sinner and I ask for your forgiveness of all my sins. I confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord and I believe in my heart that he died on the cross for my sins and that you raised him from the dead. I acknowledge that Jesus Christ is my savior and according to his word right now, I am born again. Thank you, Jesus, for coming into my life and thank you, Heavenly Father, for hearing my prayer. I ask all of this in the name of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And just like that, welcome to the body. Welcome to the to the house. Welcome into the food. You have the righteous advantage. Amen. And it's just that simple. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Well, guys, we have... <laughs> We know, we know, we had we had a lot for y'all. We had a lot for watch the replay because you probably need to anyway because we said a lot of good stuff. We um, did the Lord uh, a we, lot. We we want to give you the opportunity to ask questions. We we um, slated a few minutes for for that. Um, I did see um, one or two questions come in. So if you do have a question about what we went over tonight, start typing it in the in the um, comments. We'll give you about thirty seconds to um, type something if you have anything that you want to ask us on tonight. Um, and then we'll start wrapping up. We'll give some announcements and reflection questions. Amen. Amen. Uh, we will go. I do see one question in the chat already. So we'll pull that up. We'll start with that. <clears throat> it says, what was the first moment, if you can remember, when you saw or felt the benefits of salvation? Hmm. That's a good question. Yeah, that's a pretty good question. Um, <clears throat> am, am I going first? Fine, I can I can go first. Not we all not going to talk at the same time, I guess. Um, <laughs> no, let's see. The first time that I recognized the benefit. Wow. Um, I feel like it was almost an immediate benefit. Um, I know Co Pastor talks a lot. She says, you know, you. I remember her remember her saying that she the Lord would speak to her at an early age and um called her at an early age, but then she got older and kind of straight away. And I, I exactly my testimony is, is one and the same, you know, uh being able to hear God at an early age and coming to him at an early age and then straying away. That straying away led me into jail. And I remember um vividly May 21st of 2006, um, I gave my life back to the Lord. I heard the Lord tugging on my heart and I gave my life back over to, the, to God. I came back to him out of a backslidden state. And that whole night um, I cried. I could not stop crying. I just was crying, 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 could not stop crying. And the my the benefit was I got to know Jesus and he immediately showed up for me. I had already been there for months and it didn't, it seemed like no matter what happened, it was always something that was coming up that was keeping me from being released. And within, I want to say within about 30 days, 30, I want about 30 or 40 days after, after giving my life back to the Lord, I was released. And so um, that was that that benefit of favor of God opening up doors that that men had closed. And when the enemy was trying to sift me in that in that time, um, the the I was immediately given, I guess, a, 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 a righteous advantage, because after that, you know, I was just I was praying so much and I was just praying that God would move. And he did. So I experienced that righteous advantage almost immediately at that time. 
Excellent. Uh, okay, well, I guess I'm going next. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, I don't know if I remember the first time, but I'll just say, like, generally speaking, um, benefit of salvation for me. Um, I would say I see the benefit of salvation in my decision making. Um, and that the, the, I can assuredly say that the Holy Ghost definitely helps me in my decision making, like able to just make sound decisions. Um, I, as Mr. Malik said, um, you know, came to the Lord very young and I've always been very like comfortable talking to God, praying to God. Like, I just always felt like I could do that. Even as a child, like I would just be looking up at the sky and be like, you know, just saying whatever I'm saying, thanking the Lord for my candy that day or whatever. Um, but I would just say a benefit for me is in my decision making. Like even, even like when I may want to do something that it, it may not be that in my best interest at the moment, or it wasn't at that time, but like Chastity just wanted to do it. It may not have been like what God wanted me to do, but I just wanted to do it. But because I love God above everything else, I value God above everything else. God is my priority in my life. Like that's my guiding factor. So if, you know, I pray about it, be like, Lord, you know, can I do this? Can I do that? What you say about this, this, that, and the other. And, you know, have peace about moving forward with it, um, then, you know, I do it or whatever, you know, I'm likely to do it. If I feel like the Lord, the, the Lord may be saying, you know, that's not, that's not the route, right route, not right now or something like that. Then I know, um, Hey, pump the brakes on this or what have you. So throughout my life, I would say a, a big, there are many, but a, a big one that I definitely see every day is in my decision making. Um, just being able to make, um, and I, I, don't, I don't, I don't always get things right. Of course, I'm not perfect, but just being able to make sound decisions, um, you know, on a pretty uh, regular basis and just leaning and trusting on the Lord, the Holy Spirit to help me do that is an excellent benefit because, you know, and I know we all know this. Some people, a lot of people struggle with making, you know, sound decisions like it doesn't come e easy and not to say that it comes easy for me, but it's definitely easier with the Holy Ghost <laughs> than without. So, <laughs> I'll say that. But um, yeah, a lot of they just, you know, they struggle in that area making a sound decision or the best decision for their lives. It, you know, it may be the 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 decision may be um to for lack of a better term the lesser of two evils if you will but is that the the best route for you to take you know um so yeah that's what i'll say with that decision making for me mr frank you got one that's a good one too Chaz. yes um so like you all it's been it's been early when i became uh saved and but one of the main ones i noticed was um just favor with just people um, and then just like leading others. Um, some people like say natural leader, but it's not that I want to lead. It's just like, wait, hey, let's can we have y'all thought about this? And the more I start talking, people are just like, okay, that, that sounds better. Let's go with that idea. Um, it's just been like that from the time I got saved. Like this has been early, but that's when I know one of the benefits to have favor with all men. Um, and even though it might not be like what people want to hear they'll still value that because I'm not going to deter from saying the truth. Um, even if it's not favorable to say, I'll still say it. Um, and that's something you can't really do that when you don't have favor because people are going to shut you off. But I do know that is one of my benefits that I remember early on, um, right, right from the get go. Um, where it was like in elementary, just being like the outcast kid to all of a sudden now people just coming up, talk to me. I'm like, who are you? Oh, okay. Yeah, sure. Um, can we do this or have you considered that? And that's just like from elementary um, that I remember early on. I'm just talking and I am on mute. I don't see any more questions, everyone. Thank you, Mr. Frank. <laughs> Um, so I think we can move on to announcements. Yes. Awesome. Okay. So I'm gonna get rid of the um comment up here. All right. Uh and do you want to ask any prior questions before going to announcements? Yes. Sorry. For this? Go um you can yeah, you can ask the reflex reflection questions and then we can do announcements and pray out. Sure. 
Um, and so reflective questions we had for you all was, do you know Jesus for yourself? Again, if you just now got saved, we look forward to hearing your testimonies of how you're getting to know Jesus. But um, do you know Jesus for yourself? Or are you just seeking these benefits that we talked about? Um, is one of our other questions is, are you seeking what you can get or the things from God? Or are you seeking the benefits of a relationship with God? Is the Holy Ghost active in your life? And how do you know? And the last reflection question is, are you experiencing the benefits of salvation now? Amen. Amen. Thank you, Minister Frank. Uh, here is a look at what is happening in and around the kingdom, guys. Our next Power Sunday is April 21st. We are worshiping in person on April 21st at the South Cobb Community Center, 620 Lions Club Drive. Amen. We have um, more information coming out on um, our next Power Sundays for the summer. So stay tuned on our website and social media pages for those updates. Uh, but our next one, our only one for April this month is on April the 21st. We will be worshiping in person at 11.45 a.m. So don't miss that service. Amen. It is that time mm -hmm. again, church anniversary. We are turning 17 years old. Y'all, we a high school senior up in here. Mm -hmm. 17. <laughs> just to give you just mm -hmm. to give you a visual, we are 17 years old. Um, so we are super excited uh, about church anniversary. We're always super excited about church anniversary because it's a time where we can celebrate and reflect on God's goodness and faithfulness over our ministry. So these are the dates for our 17th church anniversary. This is something else that you will see um, future details about in the coming weeks. Uh, you'll get the location information and the celebration activities. So again, stay tuned to our social media and website for all that information. But these are the dates. So you can go ahead and mark them in your calendars if you want to come out and celebrate with us. Uh, if you I missed any nuggets for uh, from tonight or at any point during the lessons on this year, you can always get them at our uh, resource library. This is a new initiative that we started this year where you can um, get notes from the lessons. You can get the most prominent information and points. Uh, they are available to you on our website. We will uh, put the link in the comments as well. If you want to give uh, for um, into tonight's broadcast, you can do so by texting the word 404, texting the word give to 404-689-9060 or by visiting tkhcministries.com. Amen. And if you've been watching our virtual um, Bible studies for a time and have decided this is the place where you want your soul to um, grow and flourish, you can become a member of the E-Church by following that link on your screen. You have all the rights and privileges, like we talked about earlier, of in-person members. You only, <laughs> you just, the only difference is that you fellowship with us virtually. And whenever you are, if you ever have the chance to um, come see us in person, to God be the glory, um, we welcome you in just like the folks that we see every week. Amen. Because you have, like we talked about earlier, those same rights and privileges of being a kingdom partner. Amen. Um, that concludes our announcements in and around the kingdom. Yeah. Thank you so much for being with <laughs> We appreciate you. But we pray that God is pleased. We pray that you got something from this lesson. Again, if you missed anything, because we, we it was packed to the brim, it was up yes. to the brim. So if you right. missed anything, right. watch the replay. Go to the um, resource right. library and get those Absolutely. things that you missed. Amen. We just put those comment that link in the chat. Time to pray out, right? All right, y'all okay. right, bow with me, dear and follow. We just thank the Lord for tonight. We thank the Lord for the lesson on the many benefits that you have for us. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for the access, God, Lord, that we can come to you in prayer, God. We thank you, Lord, that you are for your restorative power, Lord. And most of all, Lord, we just thank you, Lord, for the Holy Ghost, God, Lord, who is the teacher of all things, God, Lord, the leads us into all truths, God. We thank you for moving with your people on tonight, God, Lord, as we leave this broadcast, Lord, but never from your presence, God, Lord. We ask, God, Lord, that you be with them, God. We thank you, Holy Ghost, Lord, for doing the work in those, God, Lord, who have given their life to you, God. 
on tonight, God, or on our time when they see this replay. We thank you, Lord, for binding the hands of the enemy off their life. We thank you for continuing to show them more of who you are, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for giving them the discerning spirit, God, Lord, to lead and walk with you, God. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for removing any doubts, Lord, that they may have had, God. Um, as they go forward, we thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus, God, Lord, for your blood covering them, going with them, God. We thank you, Lord, for the blood of Jesus, God, Lord, going with our leaders, Lord, as they travel this month, God. We thank you, Lord, for leading and guiding. And we thank you, Lord, for the hedge of protection around the bottom. We thank you, Lord, for doing it for the ministry team, God. Lord, we lift them up to you, God, Lord, and ask us that you have your way within them, God. We thank you, Lord, that the nations, God, Lord, that they're ministering in, God. Lord, have a receptive heart, God, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for the souls, Lord, that we say, God. We thank you, Lord, for the deliverance, Lord, that is happening, God, even now. We thank you, Lord, again, Lord, for all the urges of your people, God, Lord, you have tuned in on tonight, asking God, Lord, to continue to have your way, God, Lord, being encouraging into them. Bless their week in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen, y'all. Thank you again thank for you joining so us. Come back next week. We will be on week three regarding the study of soteriology. God bless our leaders. Bless you, Pastor. Bless you, Co-Pastor, Elders, and we love y'all. We love y'all. We love you, Kingdom. Good night. Thank you for watching. Good night.